Welcome back viewers to part two of the Honda Element suspension rebuild. And rather than doing a bunch of talking right now, if you haven't seen part one, it's linked down in the description. If you have seen part one and you wanna see how this all ends, stay tuned. The fronts are way more straightforward. Uh, there's only two through bolts down here. Then we've got an ABS sensor attached here, brake line that's attached here with a 12 millimeter. Also the tie rod end here. Now, specifically with this, I'm replacing these tie rod ends. So actually before I get started, I'm gonna loosen this jam nut, but then put it back in, a, in the same position before I run off the uh, tie rod end. And I'll do that so I can try to get this back in about the same place it is. No matter what, I'm getting an alignment, but I wanna try to get back close so that I don't totally destroy a set of tires. Although I'll probably wear the old ones for a little bit. We'll talk about that toward the end of the video. For now, Let's uh, get these struts out of here. Oh yeah, always the penetrating oil. And this guy, maybe, well, it's 24, I think, millimeter. And the tie rod itself is 19. And since this whole thing is turning, I'm gonna hold it so I can get the jam nut loose. Yeah, it should be good. Hey, look at that, some light. Oh, well, this had already been broken out of here kind of didn't have to because there's really a 10 millimeter fastener that uh i can remove and take the whole bracket off lucky me that guy's a 19. a couple of love taps should knock it loose hit what it goes through seven eighths fits on that solid 19 on this side. Front struts are pretty straightforward, but there's one note I'm gonna leave you here that's kind of important. When you pull this forward, it's gonna basically wanna pull the axle out of the inner joint in here. So what you wanna do is you wanna find some way of securing this so that it doesn't pull that inner joint all the way apart. If it does, well, that's, that's not so good. So I'm gonna try to rig up some bungee cords and things in here to keep this from overextending and pulling that inner joint apart. Oh, that'll do nicely, like very nicely. Since I only wanna lower this down once, I'm gonna also undo everything on this side. And then once I have this strut, like I do the other side, lower the thing down, loosen the top fasteners, swap them out. Just trying to be efficient. Whoa. I add some torque. To complete the removal, three 14 millimeter fasteners on the top of each strut. Easily accessible, I might add. Now take one hand and put it underneath and hold the strut while you loosen these fasteners because it'll want to come dropping out. So for the last one, I'll grab hold of it. It's a little broken. Only a little though. <laughs> Here are the part numbers. I don't know which side is which, but they are left and right. They do mark these right and left though, to make things easier. And there is the part number right above it. I'm not happy about this damage though. These certainly got beat around during shipping, which is unfortunate. I don't think this is gonna affect anything, but if you uh, check these part numbers with Honda, you find they didn't come cheap. And this seems like scratch and dent because that is most certainly a dent. Make sure you have your fasteners at the ready up here. You'll need at least one. It'll be heavy. Once you get one in, you're kind of safe.
In my experience, Hondas have been breaking coil springs since back in the 90s. Um, this one isn't broken, but it looks to be on its way. I don't trust that one. So I'll just start it by hand. That's fine. Now it's just a matter of hooking everything back up and these bolts go through this way. These don't have to be torqued on the ground. This fastener came out, but I can't see how it hurts to put a little bit of NICs on this stuff. It's these little things that break that just eat up so much of your time. So if I can avoid that from ever happening to begin with, I feel like I'm ahead of the game. As before, just to be safe, I'll start it by hand. I can just take it all the way, really. Nothing wrong with using hand tools now and again, right? Especially for something like this, it's just a bracket. It's a little rough going in, combination of rusty fastener, fastener and new paint on the new part. Hopefully just spin our tie rod off of here. Here's a little trick. If it's tough coming off, you can use a wrench on this part, or I've done this. You can take a wrench like this, and put it on here and sort of pull it around like that. Now I'm doing these because the boots are starting to go. And instead of getting serviceable parts, I just went with more Honda parts. These lasted that amount of time. To be honest, I haven't found too much in the aftermarket that even with the grease fitting lasts a long time. This has been on here, what, 160, 100, 140,000 miles or so. It's still good except for the boot. Part number for the new part. Yes, yes I will put a little bit of anti-seize on there. And I'll just run this down till it bottoms out on the jam nut. All I did was loosen it so that this would come off of here. And when it's all back together, I'll tighten said jam nut. And then it'll be alignment time. New cotter pin. That's one side done. Oh wait, let's tighten that jam nut. We don't want that to come loose. This is almost like the definition of irony because the suspension, the engine, the clutch, a lot of new parts on this, a lot of effort, new bushings and everything down here. And this is my winter car. <laughs> so I'm going through a lot of effort for a vehicle that I'm going to drive in the salt and the junk. Doesn't seem wise, but I have, uh, well, I'll show you here in a minute for the end of the video. And I'm not as concerned about these and the NICs because I don't really, they, I don't normally see a problem with them. So I didn't bother putting any NICs on these through bolts. There it is. You might have noticed this fender liner is having an issue. I'm gonna repair that. I have a new one to install. I'm gonna install that uh, before I put on the front wheels. I'm also gonna go through and service the brakes, which I've covered in other videos. So I'm gonna go and do that stuff and we'll be right back. And we're back. Brakes have been serviced, all four wheels, front wheels in particular. And you'll note those rotor screws that are in there now. Well, I had to drill and tap those holes because they were busted off in there. And I'm weird like that. I like using the rotor screws while I bought them. Here we are. This fender liner is officially replaced. And there were some missing clips and I replaced all the missing clips and fasteners and such. So it's much more solid than it was before. Also new rotor screws. Since I was working on the brakes, I went ahead and replaced the brake fluid and the clutch fluid. Figured as long as I'm here, I might as well get it done. I hit the reset button back here also, uh, installed the uh, plug on both sides after adjusting the brakes. Uh, new rotor screws were installed. Didn't have to drill and tap back here, thankfully. 
Now the plan is to put all four wheels back on. I'm leaving the old tires on for now. I want to let the Element sit on its own weight with the new coil springs and everything for a while and maybe even drive it a little bit. I want that stuff to settle first before I do the alignment because that will affect the ride height even ever so slightly. But if it's all compressed and everything is settled when I get the alignment done, then it won't change. Well, at least that's the hope. And I won't have to worry about my old tires getting ruined because the alignment might be off because, well, I'm changing them out just before I get the alignment. Now, after I install those tires, I'm gonna go in the back, tighten everything down that's loose while it's on the ground. We'll call this done. Well, we'll go out for a little drive first, see how it feels. Oh yeah, that sits different. Can already tell just by looking at it. The camber problem back here already looks solved even before an alignment. It's pretty darn close anyway. It might be slightly cambered in, but not a whole lot. Here's the other side. Yeah, just that did wonders. I'm gonna make use of this strut box cardboard. I believe these are all 17. I'm gonna lock the parking brake before I do this. I seem to be able to get to most of these with some wrenches. Well, all of these. I apologize for not knowing the torque specs. I imagine they're somewhere in the 60 to 80 pound foot range. I still hate the way these brakes feel. But we'll work on that. I have a little trick I can try up here. Uh, you might hear a pop or something like I just heard right there. Perfectly normal as the springs and everything settle in. My steering wheel is way off. <laughs> kind of expected that. It might have been aligned with a broken coil spring before, which it would have not been sitting level. But as far as the way the suspension feels, this thing feels tight as a drum. Not a noise, not a squeak, not a rattle. Nothing. I'm very pleased. I mean, I'm taking this virtually restored Honda Element and I'm going to be using it as my winter car. I, it's just weird. All right, well, let's, let's try my trick for getting the brake pedal to hopefully feel better. I'm pretty sure what happened was is the uh, people that did the brakes previously um, just compressed the caliper pistons and usually messes up the master cylinder a little bit, but sometimes I can do what I call resetting the master cylinder. And I do it by doing this. In other words, trying to lock the brakes up a few times. Sometimes that helps. The ABS kicks in even better. Well, they do feel better. Anywho, the suspension feels awesome. Doesn't make any noise. It's gonna need alignment. Ah, oh, the brakes do feel a little better after doing that. Gonna need to sort out the alignment and everything, but once we've done that, man, this thing's like new. All right, well, let's get back to the shop. We'll wrap this up. So I mentioned that I was gonna do something to help protect the work uh, that I've done here. And I got this attachment for my pressure washer, which allows you to angle up and spray underneath a vehicle like this. So I think is ideal for this situation. So I'll attach that to my pressure washer and this will be part of like a eh, probably yearly regiment to clean things out from underneath there and probably occasionally hit that rust with that uh, rust inhibitor, hoping to keep it from getting worse in the future. Remember when I mentioned that Aerogenics, the people that did these upper control arms also make some lower control arms for the element that replace these? Well, they sent them along with something else it's over here on the toolbox. 
So these are the replacement lower control arms. They're all aluminum, new bushings and everything installed. Uh, they look to be CNC machined, made in USA. Uh, this is the brace that actually goes between those two mounting points that actually stiffens the chassis back there. The thing of it is though, you lose an inch of ground clearance, which for me isn't really an issue at all because I don't off-road my element, but it's certainly something to be considered for some that uh, might be looking for that ground clearance, but know that, they, that Aerogenics also sells uh, lift kits for elements, believe it or not. Uh, they also send the socket to get those special little nuts off and they really don't want you to use an impact. And they enclose some stickers and a letter to me reminding me to remind you of a uh, discount if you type in the code Eric the car guy, uh, if you wish to get a kit like this for yourself. So you get 10% off with that, with that code. So uh, if you wanna do this yourself, I'll put links in the description to make it easy. But for now, we're gonna get these guys installed in the back of my element. Installation of these guys is gonna be pretty straightforward. I mean, you got three fasteners here that hold it to the uh, outer part of the lower control arm, and then one fastener here going through for the bushing. I'm gonna take my jack and put some support underneath this control arm so that it doesn't go everywhere. When I remove those fasteners, I don't think this would be under any kind of spring tension, but I honestly don't know. I'm gonna start with these outer three fasteners that they sent the special socket for. This thing is extremely soft metal. It's aluminum. I tried putting a wrench on it and I kind of chewed it up a little bit. So I'm going for a socket now, which appears to be an 11 16 seems to work well on that. Ah, these are not wanting to move. I don't know if they need heat, but this really soft aluminum socket doesn't really feel like it's up to the task. Oh, it's moving, nice, okay. That one's also moving, way. nice. And that's it for the socket. This guy's soft metal and it just pooped the bed. And we're back and I managed to track down the special socket. And this is like a 17 millimeter 10 point socket. I'm hoping none of these bolts break because they're not available from Honda. They're, they're kind of special. So I'd, I'd have to find something else to replace them with. So now that we have the proper, all right, that one moves. That one also moves. And that one moves. I guess I just needed the right socket. The aluminum one that came in the kit, well, that was a nice gesture, I suppose. And you'll notice the wheels are back on. I, I actually changed out the tires, mounted and balanced the new Nokian tires. Pretty happy with those. And so really all that's left with the suspension is to, to take care of this. So we've got these three loose. I know this is loose. Um, gonna support this again now. Remove all these fasteners and get some control arms in this thing. Yeah, and any place you see me use this, you can just as easily use a floor jack. This feels like I could run these out with an impact, no big deal. If you were gonna do this, I'd be considering uh, getting one of these sockets before you even start the job. Now this is gonna be re react if I remove this fastener. I've already loosened it. I lied, I didn't loosen it. All right, now it's loose. I actually checked both of these through bolts before I even went here, just to be sure. Rust has a way of wrecking your day. That should be a t-shirt. Rust has a way of wrecking your day. Bolt looks super good too. No corrosion or anything on it. I'm still gonna anti-seize it, but it's nice to see that. Let's see if these guys respond similarly. This pushing doesn't seem bad at all. So that's a good sign. Before I install the new part, I'm gonna come in here and clean the surface and make it flat. And maybe also 
throw just a wee bit of paint on it. I'm gonna paint this first, but then I'm gonna go through and chase these threads. But I'm also gonna take all these bolts that held this control arm on over to the wire wheel and clean them up and prepare them for reinsertion. But in the meantime, while paint is drying and such, I'm gonna work on the other side and get those parts apart. I'm gonna be using that same uh, chassis paint from Eastwood. I like this stuff. While that cures up and dries, get the other side apart. I removed the support and it really doesn't do anything without the support, but I wanted to have it there while I was loosening stuff. So a heads up on these bolts. Upon closer inspection, I can almost see what I think is green Loctite, which requires heat to undo. Uh, I will be installing Loctite on these when I reinstall them. I'm not sure if I'll go green, but we'll see what happens. But just know that that more than rust may be the issue that you're working against. Yes. Also, yes. All right, bottom line, get the socket if you're gonna do this job. Just, just get the socket. But I hope you saw how much this moved when I did that. Keep note of that when you put this back together. In fact, I'm gonna try to follow the witness mark of putting this in the same position, but you really, really, really should get an alignment after doing this. I'm doing this because I've got a new part going on to a mating surface that has corrosion on it. I want to make sure that when the new part is fastened down, there's no corrosion under it that can uh, cause the fasteners not to hold it as well as it should. I also notice there's a little lip down at the bottom, which may orientate the rest of the arm. Because when you get this from Honda, you get the whole arm. They don't give you these bits. Only the aftermarket offers these. I busted out my thread chaser kit, and it looks like these are 14 by one, which I have uh, both here. So I'm gonna use the thread chasers to do this. I didn't spend a whole lot of time with the wire wheel here because it was taking too long. And I figured I'd just chase the threads and clean them up that way. But doing this will help ensure that we've got good thread engagement. We're talking about suspension components. There's lots of vibrations here. So anything you can do to ensure longevity of your fasteners and fastenings, the better. I'm gonna do this five more times and uh, then we'll do what's on the car. We'll get these things installed. Now I'll clean out these holes. 14 by one thread chaser. Now I'll do the same to the other side. So these control arms are marked lift and right. So I'm gonna assume the lift is the left and install it as such. The bushings are clipped in, so I'm just gonna clip that little zip tie off of there before I get it up in there. Now I'm gonna be using red Loctite on these fasteners. All over the instructions, they say not to use an impact. And this is aluminum, so it's soft. You run this, an impact down on this, you could ruin the part. Hand tools only here. And I'm just gonna snug them up in the position that I want. And then I will uh, do the final torque after I've got the center section installed. That looks like it was its approximate position before. All right, let's get this other side installed. These really kind of only go on one way because these fasteners will only line up with this left and right thing. But just make sure you're up in here first before you start your fasteners because I don't know if you'll be able to get it up in there otherwise. The extra time that I took to clean up these threads, so worth it right now. These are just going right in. We'll also make the Loctite work better. These parts are super shiny for something I'll be driving in the winter. Obviously got to get the holes lined up and I don't want to hurt the aluminum finish. I'm going to give this a try. That's how you do it with one dude. 
And this isn't tightened down yet, it's just there, but it's all the way through. Well, that looks pretty, like too pretty. The instructions state to first torque these to 43 foot-pounds and then come out and torque these to 69 foot-pounds, I believe. Yes, 69 foot-pounds out here. And in Newton meters, that would be 59 Newton meters, 93 Newton meters out here. Now the outer's to 69 foot-pounds. And I would go by their recommendations over factory recommendations because once again, aluminum part, aluminum is soft. All we have left now is to put the wheels on, torque them down, send it to the alignment shop. It never really set well with me torquing the inner control arm bolts up in the air while the suspension was at full droop. So I loosened those bolts, lowered the element down on the ground and retorqued them while it was on the ground before I took it to the alignment rack. It made me feel better. How much of a difference it made, I honestly don't know. Well, I just got back from the alignment shop and things are looking very good. Adjustable upper control arms for the win. Here's the other side. Well, I can say just driving around, it already feels better, like way better. Now that the alignment's done, the steering wheel's straight, which is nice. It doesn't feel so squirrely either because, well, the alignment in the rear was way off. Let's just say way off. <laughs> but now it's where it's supposed to be. Now it does feel more stable, but I can't say I can attribute that to the uh, aerogenics parts in the back, those lower control arms and that brace, because I also replaced those rear struts. So that comes into play. Uh, it certainly rides better than my older element, which nothing in the rear suspension has been dealt with on that one. And that's got a comparable mileage. It's got about 140,000. This one's got uh, 184. As far as was it worth it? I think so. I mean, all this stuff has been renewed. I'll have this thing going for years to come, like years to come. And the way it's running and driving right now, I'm very pleased, extremely pleased. I got a new suspension, new engine, a bunch of other new and updated stuff. Nothing to complain about. Anyway, let's get back to the shop and wrap this up. Well, that was a bit of work for sure, but certainly worth it. I mean, now I have an element with a completely new suspension, Honda parts no less. Also that stuff from Aerogenics allowing me to adjust the rear camber, uh, that's huge. In fact, when I took it in for the alignment, the alignment guy said to me, those are really nice. You gotta, it's nice having those and being able to make that adjustment because apparently this is a thing with elements. I'll put links in the description to all the parts and tools and other information. So uh, check the description for additional information. If you have automotive questions outside of this video, I ask that you head to airthecarguy.com, also linked in the description. Thank you so much for watching today. Be safe, have fun, stay dirty, and I'll see you next time.